What's up, fish tank people? FishtankTV.com, Dustin's Fish Tanks, bringing it to you with my man Brian doing actually a fish tank TV. You guys have seen him at his house. Brian, say what's up, man. What's up, everybody? Yeah, so Brian, you've done how many of these? This will be number eight. This will be number eight. Wow. So anytime Brian sees a TV on the side of the road, he runs out and grabs it. This is actually one we were going to... We found that the hood, the top of it's kind of so-so, but the uh, the other one we saw was better. But it was gone when you found it. Is that right? So we were, but whatever. This one will work. So what we're going to show you in this first step here is we're going to show you um, what you need to start with this, Bryce. So walk us through this here. What are the tools that you need? First, take us through each one and what you need. Why? All right. The most important thing is you want a quarter-inch hex wrench. socket, whatever. Socket, yeah, whatever you want to call it. I don't use the socket. I use a flathead screwdriver, put it inside, that way I can get good action with it. But most of the time when you have an inner uh, screwdriver with interchangeable heads, the end is actually a quarter inch. So you can use this the same way as you use this. So if you don't have this and you happen to have a screwdriver that has the interchangeable heads to it, you can pull the head out and it should be about a quarter inch. So usually that works just fine. Okay. I use a small hammer. If you have one with a straight head, that works really well sometimes when you're prying up the lid. You're also going to need a putty knife or a paint scraper with a metal tip on it. Get one that has a little bit of wiggle room to it as well because when you're using the hammer you can hammer it in and then you'll use this and literally work it across the wood to get the glue free. Um, this is a, a hole starter. I use this sometimes if there's a really hard spot to get at. Pound that in a little bit and then I can actually get the hammer and the putty knife in to get the leverage. And then you also need a pair of wire cutters. These are a necessity because there's so many wires in the back of these TVs. And those are actually just needle nose pliers you're using the cutter. Yeah, part I'm, of I'm using just the wire cutter part, but yeah, those are needle nose pliers. If you have a pair of just wire cutters, that's just the same. And then you're also going to need hinges to put the lid on the top. And then in a, in a later part of this, we're going to show you the actual like fish tank parts of it. But for now, this is what you need to get started. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take off the back part. So. Brian's going around and like you've done this is your eighth one so I mean he said that every single one of these has about the exact same thing when it comes to the uh, the size of the bolts coming out the back so shouldn't be a big deal there. They all on the side all these things they might even have screws holding this back in it might just be these two little plastic things you just turn them flat so that it pops right off lean it forward and it should just pop right out usually you'll have some sort of cable input you can just lift that up and just let that dangle. There we go. This is the back of your television. Everything inside of here, basically, we're going to remove. You want to save the front panels that your buttons are on. If you don't save those, you're going to have holes in the front of your TV, which you don't want. But we'll get to that here in a minute. So okay. here we go. We'll, we're going we'll, to start gutting everything out of it now. Here we go. All right, so we've taken the back off the TV, and Brian has gone ahead and disassembled most of this. And our goal is just basically to gut the television at this point. Uh, the first thing we did though, Brian, show the bottom the circuit board or whatever. There's generally two screws. They're very easy to find. They're in the bottom corners of the tray at the bottom. The tray actually just slides right out. The TV does not fall out that easily. Yeah. Around the TV, once you have the slides out, usually you have these wires that hold them in place. At each corner you have a bracket that looks very similar to this. And usually there's three screws in each part, one in the middle and then two in the top. Right in through there. Yes. Again, I would recommend removing them out of the bottom first so the weight is at the top as opposed to removing it from the bottom or the top first. That way the TV doesn't actually break the hinges at the bottom and end up cracking the plastic. So we undo the bottom of them, the bottom two first, and then the top two and we hold it at the top. Now what are our caution points here, Brian? All right. On the tray at the bottom, just pull it out and throw it away. You do have a capacitor here. Don't mess with the capacitor. It's full of bottled up energy, and if you play with it too much, you can make it explode. Not something cool to do at all. Also, you'll note that the timestamp on this, uh, 717, 1960. So, you know, that's that's the era we're looking for. So we've slid that out, we're throwing that away. There's no need for anything on there. Trash. Tra this is also trash. Now, yeah. we've done undone our, our, what, dozen bolts on this. Exactly. The back of the TV, I'm gonna lean it down. I've already pulled it out. It falls out very easily once you have your bolts removed. But the back of the TV is actually just like a gigantic light bulb. If you break this off, all the gas inside the TV is going to come spewing out. You don't want to have that happen. If it does happen, just get out of the room, open the window, let it air out. Don't go in there for an hour or two. I don't think it would... It's not going to harm you. Don't mess with it. Yeah, just don't mess with it. But 
Just be very careful to not bend or break this piece off the end because it is basically just the cap to a bunch of pressure inside the TV. Okay, and then something just to show for fun, this is how you change the what, the colors on the yeah, TV? Yeah, you can change the pixels and everything with the little knobs or this is how they would adjust them back in the day. Usually there's paint showing where they should be for best from the factory, but That's people hilarious. could play with that a little bit. Yeah. For yeah. LCDs. So the other part here is we want to talk about, We'll go. Around, I'm going to go around to the front to show this, but go ahead and talk about it, Brian. The, the panel part here. The buttons here are actually part of the inside here. So you don't want to throw that away. You want to make sure that you keep that panel. I stripped all the wires out and just left this. This is actually one piece that came out. I screwed it back on so that I had the buttons in the front still. We'll tighten it up just a little bit. But if you remove this piece and throw it away, you're going to have holes where the buttons were, and then you'll be able to see your fish tank from the front through little small holes. If that's what you want, by all means, that's cool. But if you want it to look original, I would recommend leaving this panel on. And then also a piece of caution with this panel, you're talking about the dials and just the way that, that panel might come sticking back out. The, you know, parts of it, you said the dials yeah. the lower part? Yeah, the dials the lower part down here. I went ahead and just left them in. Um, this TV doesn't have them sticking out nearly as far. Some TVs have really long dials to get back to the electronics in it. But this one doesn't have that. Up here, there's actually two screws, some really sharp points. I'm going to remove that in a moment. All right. Here we go. All right, so we are on to the hardest part of this with Brian here. And the hardest part is what, Brian? Getting the lid off, typically? Getting the lid off in one piece without damaging the rest of the console. I mean, anybody can just rip the lid off of a TV, but you're going to crack all the plastic on the front. If you have a cracked plastic front, what's the point of having the TV tank in the first place? So our, this is our critical part here. This, this is the critical part. part. We want to get this single piece of wood that is the lid off. All right. I've already gone around with the paint scraper hammer, and the hammer. And I literally start at the edges and I, I hammered in until I had the entire seam undone. On most every TV you have a support beam going all the way across. It has three screws in it. Again, they use the quarter inch hex and just unscrew them out of there. Sometimes you get the little triangles in the corner that are extra supports. Those are usually a Phillips head screwdriver, so you can just you want to make sure you get all the screws that go upward there. But generally, most of the TVs have screws in the front, going into this top fully part to hold the two pieces of wood together in the front. That's the only hard part about this entire TV, and that's where you actually have to spend a little bit more time than you want to spend. But to get to those screws that are inside the lid, we're gonna have to actually remove this entire black frame that is the TV. We're gonna have a wooden box with four sides and nothing else. And then once we get those three screws removed, and then we'll put the plastic insert back in that makes it the TV. Now one of the things we lucked out on though is that this was only put together with screws. You said you've had some of these top ones, like you know, not every TV is the same, so. Exactly, some of the really expensive high-end TVs, especially I found RCA TVs, my, my 78 RCA that I've got at the house, the top was dovetailed together with really high-end wood. So I actually had to go through with a saw and saw through a couple spots at the back side of the TV to try and get the lid off. And I was successful, but it just took a lot of time and effort. So off with the black piece in the middle here. Yeah, right now we're gonna remove the black piece. There's usually 12 to 14 screws holding it in place. There but we go. It's gotta go off. All right, so we've got 80% of the top part off, but the most important part uh, is obviously the front part because you want to keep that TV look. So we've got the, the back plastic piece we showed you and this is how it comes apart. Brian's undone how many bolts you think? 20. 20 bolts and then go ahead and, and, and show everyone. First, you need to remove the buttons, set them to the side. This is the piece that I told you, you can see from the back what it looks like. Without the buttons, if you remove this panel and throw it away, you won't have the button to look from the front. So you want to save that intact as is. We'll put that back on in a moment. We've already gone ahead and unscrewed all the screws around the black plastic shell here. This is what makes your TV a TV. So we're actually, once all the screws are removed, we're just going to remove it out of the TV. Just set it down up here for just a moment. But in the front, there's a wooden bar going across. To remove the top, we usually have anywhere between three and five Phillips head screws. Those are what you have to remove in order to get the entire top piece to come off. Without that, you're not going to succeed. But once that's removed, then we actually go ahead and put the TV back together. And the top part can come off at any point after you've removed those screws. Oh, it's a lovely noise. And then we've also got the top part off here to yep. show. The top part you can completely lift up now. The top part can be completely lifted up. On this one right here, we had these little uh, dowels in these parts right here. One there, one there, one there. 
and one there and those ones were kind of tough to pull out but then it just comes from there so now we have the the lid basically removed and we are at basically full demolition we have to build a stand to put it on but we have to screw the lid or the plastic shell back in obviously now and that's it what up fish tank people fish tank tv yeah i'm making a fish tank tv.com dustin's fish tanks bringing it to you it was raining last time we were working on this tv tank uh, today we're sweating balls. Say what's up, Brian. What's up, everybody? <laughs> yeah, Brian, just just straight ninja with this shit, man. Straight ninja. So where we left off, we were gutting the inside of this TV here. We had these uh, little brackets that came in. You had all that electrical stuff. We removed all that. We've got those. Obviously, those are a gots to go situation. Uh, it's real easy. We just flip the TV, um, you know, overall either on its front, preferably on its back. And there's two bolts. Go ahead and flip that up and just show us. Yeah. Yeah. Just so tip it backwards. Unscrew the screws. Yeah, real, real easy right there. So those are gone. But then that leaves us with a pretty decent um, surface area. Before we talk about, um, we're going to talk here in just a second about supporting this, but I just want to talk about what we're doing here uh, internally with it. Brian is holding a piece. Um, all this stuff was like sticking in here. You can see this piece. This is what held the wires. This is where your sensor shines in. We're just going to remove that so we have a flush surface on the front. Remove this. And here, so we have a flush surface. Go back to that one there. All right, so yeah, that's all in. That was in there somewhere like that. And the the fun part about this is it's just you know breaking it. I mean, you just we just cut it, and, and you know you got to be careful with Carefully. it. Careful with it, and it's fun because I get to do the cutting, and Brian's like cut this. But uh, yeah, so we've been cutting this. I left this on here intentionally just to show you like this is this is no bueno here. So we have to uh, you know continue to cut that off. And then another thing Brian did it's it's a very heads up play on his part. There was a speaker. Could be banging with that thing, huh? Some serious woofer action from 1960 or whatever old this TV is. But obviously that was there. That's now removed. Brian's uh, put a piece of cardboard in there so that you can't see through there. Which, you know, just light would shine through. It would look funny having light shine through on the little slits on the bottom. So we've got that done. All he did is just, just put a screw through that piece of cardboard. You know, you could probably color it black if you wanted to. But this is the important part, Brian. So let's talk about this. We've got this vented bottom here which is no dice. I mean, this wood just looks kind of crunk. I don't know how you guys can see it. I mean, it just doesn't doesn't look that great. So what we're gonna do is, Brian's gonna flip this thing back and we're gonna show you what we're up to here. And obviously you always wanna flip it backwards so that you're not messing with the front. You get scratching it up or anything. So we've got this underside here. Now, there's a couple of ways to do this. And first, let's talk about why we're doing this here. A 29 gallon, um, a gallon of water weighs 8.8 .8 pounds times you know 29. You want to call it 255 pounds roughly, plus or minus with gravel and rocks. So if you're supporting 255 pounds, you want to make sure you do it right. So you could really you know, have some issues here. So Brian and I were talking about this. Brian, what's your recommendation for? There's some options. You've done some things some different ways here. So yeah, there's a bunch. Of get different down a little bit, a little, get down a little bit, and show us what we're doing here. So all right, basically you got a six-inch gap below the bottom piece of the TV itself. We want to support that. You can use about anything to support it. I've used bricks before in three spots throughout the middle just so that the tank itself, when it's sitting on the bottom, is not going to come crashing through this big, gigantic, empty hole here. Um, what you want to measure is the height at the edge. This is the exact amount. This tank, we got six inches. Let's show that here. Six inches on the side. So that's what we need to support in the middle so that the TV itself is flush all the way across the bottom and will support the weight evenly. Right. We're hanging six inches, folks. And so we got the we got the bricks or not the bricks. Excuse me. We're using uh, what are these? Seven inches, inches by seven one by and a half. One and a half roughly. So one and a half times four gets you six inches. So so we just cut these. These you can set in place once you have the TV where you want it in the, in your bedroom in your house wherever you're gonna put it. You'll set these down on the floor and then we'll set this down. If you want, you can actually mount something to the side to hold them together. Put some super glue between them. Put some Elmer's glue between them, just so they stay together as supports. And we cut, obviously the, the cuts really don't matter all that much. Um, you know, crunk cutting, whatever. It was just some scrap pieces of wood we had. So um, that's that's really where we are with that. We're gonna probably super glue these together, or you know, wood glue them together, whatever. Uh, and, and that will be adequate, yeah, Brian? I mean, that's, that's, yeah, that's plenty gonna enough. Be, that's gonna be just fine. If you want, you could even take a little bit of wood glue on the bottom here and actually glue them to the bottom. My first TV tank I ever did, because we're actually going to elevate the inside as well, you could screw from the inside into this back piece here, but you want to be careful just so that you don't have any screws hanging over or anything so that nothing's going to make it uneven inside. 
but wood glue would work just fine for you. It's going to support it. Once you have the weight of the tank on top of it, they're going to hold together. They're, they're not going to fall apart on you. Okay, and then let's take these out and let's flip it up real quick, and we're going to show you guys. Um, this is a really critical part aesthetically uh, with the tank, okay? So the dimensions of a 29-gallon tank, it's 30 inches, our wonderful 29-gallon tank here. It's 30 inches across, 19 inches up and down, and then it's what, like 13, 13 roughly, 13 roughly of the back. So the problem is, Brian, and, and get down and, and show this here, is we're going to do the through the TV shot. What we've got here is we want to make sure that the tank is actually in the window of the TV. So if we were to set it flush on the bottom, 19 inches would end here. You'd have this entire inch and a half, two inch gap on top with nothing. Yeah. So we actually want to put supports on the bottom as well on the inside of the TV frame so we can elevate it up about two inches so that the lip of the tank actually sits just above the inside window. So we want the lip, and let's just show that again from this angle here. We want the lip of the tank right about here. We don't want the lip below this or else you'll see light through it. In the same instance, you want to have only glass showing in the area where you're And that's screen. important. That's what we're trying to do, right? Yeah, you want it to look as natural as possible like it was made to be this way. So from top to bottom of this TV right now, we've got 23 inches. We've got four inches to play with roughly. But we've got to remember later on we'll put lights in. We'll talk about that in the next video. Okay, so we've done our measurements and we looked and we realized that we need to raise this up uh, two inches, I think. So we're going to raise it up two inches. So we've already got these pieces here. Go ahead and rotate one of those ends. So yeah, we got uh, one and a half inches here. Well, that's not going to cut it. But what we're going to do is we've actually cut this piece of wood here. Um, this is actually a scrap piece of wood. You'll notice that the, the corner, that doesn't matter. Um, 31 inches across, sits down in here like so. And um, yeah, we've got it up. And the reason we did that like we showed in the last video is we don't want it to be too far down. But uh, let's go ahead and slide this TV tank in, my man. The moment is then, folks. So we slide that sucker in. You may have to put it in from the front, depending on how big your supports are on the back. Yeah. Which is so, not a big deal. Just be careful not to lift the tank by its rim, because you can really damage yeah, it. Yeah, we're, we're going in from the back. He, he meant the top. So going in from the, the top down. We were fortunate enough to be able to get it in there. But let's just go ahead and show this here. So that's what we're working with, folks. Show me what you're working with. So that's what we've got. Uh, a couple of a couple of notes uh, worth considering here with your TV. Every TV that you're going to be putting in is uh, different. So we want to show uh, real quick, Brian. I want to show the back, the, the top part here. How we have limited room for the lighting. In the next video, we're going to do lighting and filtration. But we're going to go ahead and show this. So you got to watch because you don't have so much distance and talk about this, Brian. You have very yeah, like you got approximately two inches now worth of lighting space, and that's about it depending on what kind of lighting you have. and a lot of my TV tanks, I've used the Eclipse hoods because it's completely enclosed and you can actually set them down just briefly inside the tank and it won't affect the lighting. But if you're trying to do an open top tank, you want to make sure that your light is not going to sit down in the water. The new LEDs that are out nowadays are only an inch thick. They're fantastic because you can mount them directly to the top part here and it won't affect the actual tank. It's not going to get in the water. They're completely enclosed systems for lighting. Um, yeah. But yeah, you just want to make sure that your light is not going to be sitting inside of the water. That the worst thing you want to have is an electrical problem and fry all your fish. That's it. Yeah. If you like what we're doing, subscribe. Next video is lighting and filtration, baby. TV tank on. What's up, fish tank people? Fishtanktv.com. Building a fish tank TV. I got to show y'all what's going on. Brian, the TV tank master, say what's up, man. What's up, everyone? All right, so today, folks, we are going to show you water in the tank, but we got some things to do first. We got to show you the lighting. We got to show you how we got to the lighting, the filtration, and kind of where we are. So the first things first, let's open this bad boy up and show everybody what we did. We have to work on the underside of this. Now, what we've done is we went ahead and painted, as you can see here. Uh, we've sanded it down, did a light sanding, and then we painted it with the acrylic paint, you can see. Uh, we didn't do the entire way to the edges because that's going to just sit down over it anyway. So uh, not 100% necessary. Obviously, it doesn't need to look that great. So we've got it painted up here. But here's an important part. We'll go ahead and put that down. Um, some alternatives to this, though, Brian, you were saying you could use, uh, what were you saying you could use? You could use tape. You could use duct tape. Uh, white duct tape. That's what I've got on a few of my tanks. You just have to realize in two to three years it's going to start to go 
bad, it's going to start cracking on you from the heat inside the tank and you'll have to replace it. But if you're willing to replace it every couple of years, that's an easy alternative to painting and you can do that very quickly. Okay, let's show this here. This is an important part here. Now we're doing the hinges before we have the lights in and we're going to talk about the lighting here in just a second. But this is the critical part because you want to put the hinges on. Uh, Brian, break it down for us. We've got one hinge on already. All right. Basically, you want to put your hinges on with the lid on the tank so that you don't have to even worry. You don't want to put half of it on here and then try and put it on the tank and get it to match up evenly. I always put the, the lid on exactly where you want it. Put your hinge on with the hinge at the dead center of the break between the two. I've already gone ahead and took a knife and just poked holes where I want it just so that it's easier to start the screws in here. You can kind of see right there that's exactly where I want it to be. And now I'm going to go ahead and just put these screws in. Granted, if you're buying a pack of hinges, it's going to come with better screws than these. We've just kind of mixed and matched some screws that we had around the house here. Yeah. So we're putting the hinges in though, but the key is we're putting the hinges on while it's set the way we want it to be sitting, not taking it off the top off to a desk and doing it like that. We're having it sitting where we want it. We're putting the hinges on. Uh, it's going to make the putting the lighting in a little bit more difficult, but we're going to be able to adjust the lighting based on the way it is, not sitting out on a bench. So that's the way we're doing that. So it's taking a little bit more work on that end, but we're going to get these hinges on. We're going to roll on the lighting. So I want to quickly talk about lighting this bad boy here. Uh, we got a couple of options with lighting. Brian, you've used the Hagen HO T5s before. Um, you've also used the Coral Life uh, makes a strip with the two uh, the two bulbs in it, but we're rolling with Build My LED on these folks. This is actually the first set of uh, this bright uh, quality LEDs I've actually got my hands on. So these are from our friends over at Build My LED. Uh, they're the XB series. I've actually never ran them on a tank by themselves. I ran them on my 125 for a minute, and they did all right. I'm curious to see how they will do on here, but I've been pretty impressed with them so far. So uh, we're gonna run with these. So we've got the lights mounted in here, and you can see we've got them rolling in here good. We put them in uh, after the hinges have already been installed. That way we can figure out exactly where we want them in here. And then what we want to do, Brian has actually put this little lever here. Talk about this, Brian. Basically, you just want a single piece of wood. You can put a screw below it over here to stop it, but you, just a single screw through a piece of wood. That way, when you close the tank lid down, you can actually stop it. So when you're doing water changes, you don't have to have it leaning up against something, and it's not really just not in your way all the time. If we had enough room, we could do one on both sides, but it's not necessary. This one will hold it just fine. Just make sure your screw doesn't pop out the side, and you've got a sturdy enough screw where it's not going to break. So we've got our lighting in here. We've also got our filter in here. We don't have the uh, air pump hooked up, so we've actually got a little too big of a, uh, a sponge filter in here. And um, you obviously, you can't see it from the front there, but um, if you go to the side a little bit, you can see it. So, and Brian's... Uh, so I pay him top dollar. We went through the front here, so that keeps it pinned to the front there. We would use a smaller one, like the diameter of a pop can or a pop exactly. bottle or something one like that. For so, 25 to 35 so uh, yeah, folks, here it is. Your moment is in. Let's flip this sucker down and make sure when oh, you are yeah. doing this, you want to have a lid on this. Tank. Before your moment is in, um, yeah, put the lid on. Well, let's talk about lid types real quick here. Glass, the benefits of glass, obviously, it's sturdier. Go ahead. Yeah, glass is going to be sturdier for you. If you have glass, then obviously it doesn't give. There's no give at all, so if the light actually sits too low, the tank won't, the lid won't close directly on the tank with acrylic. You'll get a little bit of a bend to it, so you could actually have the lights pushing just slightly into it. You could also use the Eclipse systems. They have the enclosed light. If you can buy that piece, you can get it at a yard sale, just an old Eclipse lid. You can take that piece of plastic and screw it on above your light. Then it doesn't matter as much if the light actually touches the water. Um, that'll perfectly seal it. And you've done that on two different tanks, right? Yeah, I've got it on two different tanks right now. I really like the Eclipse lighting system for the top. I've even just used just the shell around T5s before just as a way to keep the lights dry. All right. But if you have your air stone on, you want to make sure that you have something above the air stone. The air stone will bubble onto the top of your tank and will make your wood warp. You don't want to have that happen. So make sure we have something above so where the air stone is bubbling. Warp. Yes, that way you don't get a bunch of condensation on the bottom. Even though it's painted, it can still warp up. You can see we ever had this tank beforehand. The wood is not real smooth at the top. It has some water damage. Somebody spilled something on this at one point or another. So, And we also found it on the side of the road. So. Exactly. <laughs> All right, let's flip it down and flip it on, my man. I got that. All right. Is everyone ready? Oh, your moment is in, folks. Here we go. TV tank. If you like what we're doing, subscribe, fish tank people. Guess what we're going to be working on next. If you think this is how I'm going to aquascape it, forget it. <laughs>